Hello, everyone. My name is Aina Alive. I am an agile and enterprise coach with about 10 years of experience in the industry. And today we are going to talk about the heated topic, which is from PMO to VMO, from project management office to value management office, the transformation to agility. And let me start sharing my screen. Wonderful. So from project management office to value management office, transformation to agility. You know, recently I was uh, delivering a topic on agile and uh, waterfall methodology. And uh, I was asked uh, as an agile coach, Aina, what do you think about uh, project management office? Do you think they are dying? Do you think they already served their purpose? And what is going to be next? And honestly, I was surprised because first I... I was thinking, okay, as an agile coach, I should think about it. I never thought about it. And I needed to reply something. So yeah, I answered the question, but um, it was still a question mark in my head because I kept thinking, so project management office, I know about them. I never worked there, but it's um, a quite a recent term. So why would someone ask me about that? So I started doing um, research. And what I found out first was that most large organizations have a project management office. Okay, that's what I heard. While in the year of 2000, only 47 of organizations surveyed had a project management office from PM Solutions 2012. And by 2012, the rate had nearly doubled to 87%. So, so far, everything is looking good. We started the PMO like at the end of the uh, 90s and in the year of 2000, we had uh, about 50% of organizations with PMO, but by 2012, we got almost 90%. So everything looks great. So why would PMO die? Why would they end their service? Let's uh, continue our research. But uh, before that, I want to make sure that uh, we understand uh, what uh, project management office is. And I found out the simplest definition, which is uh, it's common to expect that uh, project management offices to improve uh, resource planning, forecasting practices, and project management processes, and enhance reporting, governance, and performance measurement processes. So basically, the project management office is uh, helping project managers to be better at their job. And I also define seven pillars. Definitely, there are way more than seven. But how I view project management office, so for me, project management office is a strategy, a governance, process, management, project delivery, operations, and uh, coordination. And a few types of... Uh, PMOs, and the first one, as an Agile coach, my favorite is supportive PMO, which provides a consultative role to projects by supplying templates, best practices, training, access to information, and lessons learned from the project. Another one is controlling, which means compliance may involve adopting project management frameworks or methodologies using specific forms, templates, and tools. And directive, as, as a directive PMO, it means uh, they take control of the project by directly managing the project. So recently we are experienced uh, the black swan, which called uh, uh, COVID-2019. Uh, and uh, I expect we will have more black swans, unfortunately, in the nearest future. So directive and uh, controlling PMO I think uh, should stay in the past uh, because if you're direct or control, you can truly really pivot uh, during unprecedented times. But if you are supportive, it means you are agile, you adopt uh, to uh, changes and you can pivot quite easily. And let's uh, move on to another topic. So, however, with the constant push towards doing more with less, constant growth is the PMO scopes and areas of responsibility. And with um, the stupid economic growth, project management offices increasingly struggle to meet organization expectations of them and continue to fail. So 25% fails within a year, 
conception and 50% within two years, again, another research by 2010. So here we start to understand why this conversation started that PMOs are not serving their purpose anymore. And let's look at why PMOs fail and why they stopped serving their purpose. Now I run a survey on my LinkedIn profile and I unfortunately I couldn't find any researchers such as McKinsey or the other famous research groups. So I've done my personal research on LinkedIn as I already mentioned and also spoke to people who worked for PMOs and these are the main trends I could identify. So first, they have luck strategy and they focus in on wrong things rather than help project managers in promote agility. They focus on command and control or other issues depends on the organization. Uh, PMO metrics don't show visible value. And this is another interesting topic because all of us need to use metrics to make sure that we are tracking the progress and if we do something wrong, we can pivot as soon as possible. But it's another big topic of the conversation of what metrics we need to use. And I can tell you right now because it's individual. Each organization is individual, each team is individual. So we have like a toolkit of metrics, but we need to understand what metrics we use and what purpose they suit. For example, I'm sitting on a chair now. So chair is my tool. It's fine. I'm using it for a right purpose, but I can stand up, grab my chair and hit your head, for example. So it's going to be like the same tool, but the purpose is wrong. And unfortunately, what I see in the big organizations, there are some metrics. So for example, uh, velocity for the teams in Agile, which is supposed to be used for the right thing it's for the team to identify their path and their pace and um, make sure that they don't take more than they can bite. But unfortunately, this metric is used for leadership to report to the team uh, progress and report individual velocity, which, um, transferred to the hours, which doesn't make sense. So metrics is a big topic, again, to consider for each organization. But let's move on to the next one. Uh, PMO reporting level is too low. And uh, lack of senior management uh, committed to the PMO, which is uh, another issue. We need the support from the uh, leadership to make sure that we are helping our team and uh, organization. But if PMO is running on their own without any support, they can do just uh, little to provide some help. Establishing PMO for the wrong reason, so we keep having this trend like wrong focus, wrong metrics, wrong reasons, and perceived as a project policy function, which is my uh, favorite item here. Sometimes as an agile coach, I am also used like an agile police for the organization. And again, it comes to command and control. So these are Six issues, six main issues why PMOs fail. And what is the proposition? The proposition is to move PMO to VMO, to Volume Management Office. But how are we going to do it? We will use Agile to adapt PMO to a modern way of work. But before I come to the Agile, I will explain about four social revolutions and why PMO and project management waterfall made sense before. And it still makes sense uh, for some organizations because Agile was created for IT industry. And PMO or project manager, project management or waterfall, they are not serving just IT industry. They're serving the other industries, such as uh, construction, engineering, medicine, etc. Despite the fact that uh, IT is integrating into these industries, but still we have some tangible industries and intangible industries. But let's speak about four social revolutions first. So initially we had an agricultural revolution where people were planting the herbs and it was quite predictable. We had a year long 
project and we knew like the months uh, the best uh, suited for plant the trees and then we harvest it and then we prepare it for the uh, next sprint, etc. So that was quite predictable. Then we moved to industrial revolution and our life became even more predictable. So we needed managers, we needed someone who would supervise workers, who would micromanage, who would establish the processes. But even at uh, that time, we could uh, use the continuous improvement. And uh, this is where Aline was created in uh, Toyota. But uh, coming back to industrial revolution, the projects were tangible. For example, if we are in construction and we are building someone's home, we built houses for centuries, for years. So we know the project from the beginning to the end. We know the materials we need to use. So we know the architectural design. So definitely there are some deviations if the customer would like a design nobody had before. So it will provide some challenges, but still we know how to build houses. So the scope is more or less clear. The budget is also clear if we know what materials we are gonna use, if we have the workers to build it, if we know the salary, if we identify risks, if we know the length of the project, if we know, for example, that we need to start in spring to be able to finish it by fall, otherwise we are going to wait until winter ends. But if the project lands, is more than a year, we also can identify these risks, like we are not going to work during the winter time, so we're going to pause the project. And we can identify our budget more or less precisely. But then in the 90s, we moved to the information era, and now we are moving into a virtual era. So here, projects became intangible. We can't see the IT security project, for example, compared to we can see the house or we can see the bridge or the other tangible item. So it got very challenging to use a regular waterfall approach working with intangible projects. And what's more, not just intangible projects, but the projects nobody worked before like ever in our human history. So they were like lots of unknowns. Even if I want to build the website, and it's already quite known project, but still as a customer, I, I don't know what I want from my website. I want it to be nice and I want um, people to buy my product from my website, but this is not enough for the IT person to figure out what exactly I want at the end. And so at the end, the IT person built the website on the way he or she understands. And then at the end, I'm not satisfied, but, I agreed on that without knowing what I am agreeing to the customer. And when I launched it to my clients, they told like, they don't like the design, they don't like the colors, the font is inattractive, so they can't find the button to purchase my product. And so they leave to another website. And then I come to the developer and uh, tell him, you didn't finish your work. My customers are not satisfied. And he told, but it wasn't the requirement from the beginning from you. So I've done my work. So both parties are not satisfied. And it's something simple. Imagine working for banks and imagine the security they need to provide for our personal information. Imagine like the medical industry or the immigration industry or like the IVA industry. Those projects are huge. It's not the website, but if we have such difficulties by building the website, imagine the level of difficulties working with such heavy and complex projects. So this is where the real project management stopped serving the issue and we needed a new approach. And this is where Agile came to the market. So what is Agile? Agile is an approach to software development under which requirements and solutions evolve through the collaborative effort of self-organizing and cross-functional teams and their customer or end user. So in a simple way, we use the uh, mindset and the uh, methodology based on different frameworks such as uh, Scrum, uh, Kanban, SAFE, uh, etc. And frameworks 
are not agile, but we are using the methodology and mindset that uh, means that we are placing our customer first and we are gathering their requirements and how can we gather the requirements if uh, the customer doesn't know what they want. So we work in short iterations using planning and designs and develops and tests, then deploy it to the market, review, launch, then gather the uh, feedback. And after that, we do the same iteration, like uh, plan, design, develop, test, deploy, provide the feedback, review, and then launch to the uh, bigger uh, market. So that's how we work in Agile. And coming back to the uh, approaches, so Agile is an umbrella. And I know for many, Agile is equal to Scrum, but no, if you see here, Scrum is just the one lightweight approach and one lightweight framework under the Agile umbrella. So as I mentioned, there is Kanban, extreme programming, continuous integration, and many more. I didn't place all of them here on the slide. And there are fuller approaches such as uh, Scrum of Scrum, uh, Agile project management, SAFE, uh, etc. So Agile is an umbrella again, and there are different frameworks you can use uh, for uh, your organization. And the values of Agile, I already mentioned that Agile is a methodology, it's not a framework. So this means that we value people over processes and tools. And I don't say that processes and tools are not important. We just focus more on people, on their collaboration, on their level of happiness over processes and tools in the organization because we are doing intangible projects, as I already said. And for this, we need more creativity. We need more communication. We need more collaboration to resolve the issues, to resolve the uh, blockers. So uh, processes and tools are important part, essential part, the baseline for uh, our work, but collaboration is a key. Otherwise, we will never solve issues and we'll never launch uh, the valuable products for our customer. The second one, customer collaboration over rigid contracts. Again, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, website idea. So if we create a contract, then people would provide you the work based on the contract and the customer is unhappy because at the end appears that it's not what they want, but they don't know what they want and there's a problem. So that's why we, work in a short iteration to ask the feedback for, from our customer to implement it on the earlier stages. Well, for example, if the developer creates just a draft for my homepage for the website and ask my feedback, and I would say like, yeah, I wanted it to be yellow and blue because these are my favorite colors. And I also read somewhere that if I target North America, the blue is the favorite color of North Americans. So I believe that it's gonna attract my customers. But then when you have just the first front page, I see that actually looks like Ikea and I provide consulting. So I don't want to be mismatched with Ikea or provide wrong impression. I don't like yellow and blue anymore. I want blue and gray, for example. This is gonna be better. And imagine if the website is built so it's going to be another project, uh, like my website 2.0 iteration. So it means I would need to pay extra money for the uh, second project uh, just to change uh, the colors. But if we collaborate with customers and provide uh, small batches of work so the customer can test and provide the feedback, it's going to be much easier to provide the feedback and it comes to the fourth one responding to change over following the plan because if we create the plan so like on friday we are launching the home page on monday we are launching another page like um, customer collaboration page for example or like feedback page so it's um, wouldn't be satisfying for the customer and for the uh, developer. Like if I provide the feedback, I don't like the font, I don't like the text, et cetera, on my homepage, 
but the developer will still follow the plan, it wouldn't work. So we need to respond to change. So I provide the feedback and the development team needs to implement it in the nearest future, in the nearest iteration. And working software over comprehensive documentation. And again, documentation is very important here, but the customer wouldn't read a hundred pages manual to uh, figure out uh, how the software works. What's important for them is the working software. And these are agile uh, values and uh, principles we are going to implement in our value management office. So for a value management office, I identified a few domains and uh, the responsibilities. So first of all, how agile value management office or like ex PMO office can uh, help and serve the organization. So they can serve as a coach definitely for project managers and for the teams. And the first thing they need to define an agile process. And to define an agile process, they need to take a holistic approach to define the processes, establish high discipline and sustainability as a driving goal, and define right metrics. I spent lots of time talking about metrics before. So define metrics that support and drive dynamic transformation. The next domain, organizing around value streams. So here we need to establish the value management office as a team of teams and define flexible streams by customer journeys. Another domain, adaptive planning. Here we are talking about strategy, which was identified as the wrong strategy and that's why PMO fails. So we need to conduct the strategy and portfolio planning. We need to conform to value rather than comply to a plan and measure business outcomes on stage outputs and sense and respond to business conditions and be able to be flexible if the business conditions changes. The fourth domain is tracking and monitoring program flow, which means to understand visual management system, a measure and improve flow, drive uh, continuous learning and adaptation, and prioritizing and selecting minimally marketable product. So maybe this won't serve all organizations, but you've heard about uh, minimum valuable product. So minimally marketable products, it's a similar idea. So we need to use prioritization techniques to select the most impactful options and deliver the minimally marketable product and learn. And the next one, evolving a funding and governance strategy. So here I am not much as used to provide recommendation because as a coach, I don't work with funds. So here we can recognize that it's fundamentally about the time value of money and gather people together who are working with uh, funding and to prepare the uh, strategy and um, agility for our VMO to be functionable. And the last one, uh, managing organizational change. So here we need to recognize that change is extraordinary, difficult, despite the fact that it might feel simple, just announce the change and make people follow it. No, remember that we are working with humans and remember that humans are resistant to change. And I can provide my personal example. I am an agile coach. I coach changes. I promote agility and flexibility. But uh, recently I bought this cute new iPhone and I used to work with the iPhones before, and it was my desire to change the phone. But it took me a few days to start using this new one because I was attached to the old one. And the new one felt challenging because I needed to learn new tools in it. I needed to adapt to a new screen, to new application, yeah, definitely I could rearrange it, but it takes time and um, I, I was lazy to, lazy to do it. So I kept resisting for a few days to using this simple tool, which is going to help me in future, actually already helping me when I started using it. But I was resisting. And imagine there are teams 
or like teams of teams and you announcing the change for people who have been working for the organization for 10 plus years or 20 plus years, they used to their norms and now they ask them to change. And no matter how hard you uh, plan the change, still something goes wrong and there is still a, a period when the situation is worse than before uh, until it becomes better. And people become like very resistant to this change when it gets uh, to the uh, downtime. And they dream about uh, coming back uh, to the past time, like uh, how good it was in the past and so now it's a disaster. And in this stage, uh, many organizations can't survive the change and they're going backwards or that appear that the change wasn't uh, properly planned or people didn't understand so, like the outcomes they want from the change. So just recognize that the change is extraordinarily difficult and you need to design and set up a holistic change management system and position the PMO or BMO to drive this change. And so, we're getting to the end, so just uh, reiterate uh, Agile and uh, Project Management Office. Uh, so what is going to be the primary function? Well, first of all, it's a transformational mindset, coaching, mentoring, and training oversight. Organizational partnerships, such as a monitoring compliance uh, with project management standards, policies, procedures, and templates. We need to use right metrics, developing and sharing between program and projects and data-driven decision and coordination of communication across the project. So these are the uh, primary function of our new Agile uh, PMO or uh, VMO. And this should be uh, providing strategic support to programs. We uh, don't have time for the uh, case study uh, regarding the US citizenship and immigration services and uh, how they used uh, agile adaptation and trade uh, more uh, office in the transition. But I highly recommend you to read a book it mentioned uh, here from PMO to VMO managing from value delivery. It uh, has uh, many valuable uh, cases. And at the last, I want to remind you that you can't uh, jump the at 99%. Even if you are 99% over, you still fail. So the same with the transformation. When you start the transformation, if you are 40% done and you're stuck or like you're 50% done, you are not done. You are falling. If you start jumping, you need to jump all 100%. Otherwise, you're dead. The same in the organization. If you start transforming, you need to get to the end, otherwise don't jump at all. And this is a book I recently mentioned from PMO to VMO. So they uh, provide a detailed explanation you know, for the domains I was talking about here. So if you're interested, I highly recommend to uh, download it. And that's all for today. Thank you very much. If you have any questions to me, feel free to join my new uh, Discord uh, chat and looking forward to answer all of the questions you have. Thank you.